joining us yeah. everyone uh, my name is Kishibashi we have uh, Lisa McCall Lisa yeah. McCall resident science scientist for uh, polar bears international um, extremely excited to be here we are on where are we now we are on tundra buggy one on the shores of Hudson Bay outside of Churchill Manitoba yeah so um, so I guess it's like a this is my first time up here. Churchill, Manitoba, there's no roads to get up here. It is pretty isolated, would you say? It really is, yeah. Train or plane is basically the name of the game to get to Churchill. Yeah. And this is the polar bear capital of... Yeah, we think so. Self-proclaimed, but it's a fitting title. You know, I think it's probably the best place to watch polar bears and one of the best places in the world to study them. Mm. Oh, so there's so much data here. Yeah, these are the best studied polar bears in the world, and we've got a data set going back mm. many decades now that's really helping us learn about the whole species. Yeah, that's because so many people live here, right? Is that I mean, this is like the only, a lot of people, it, there's a lot of access to other parts of the country through this, this town. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the best places to access polar bears. There's enough infrastructure here. Mm -hmm. um, other places in the Arctic are much more remote compared to Churchill, which is hard to oh get okay. to itself, as you just mentioned. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really is a special place. Cool. So let's see, if this screen, look at the screen, there's, where's the polar bear? It's right over here in the corner, right there. Uh, so we're up here, we've been driving around for a couple hours, and we found this guy, we confirmed he's male, uh, right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, we confirmed he's uh, other things. And then, uh <laughs> um, is there a close-up camera of the, this, uh, this polar bear that we can switch to? There he is. There oh. Does he have a name? Not that we know of. You could give him one if you wanted. He's uh, I think we should take thing. suggestions. I'm there. Gonna <laughs> go with like Ralph for now, but I don't think that's a. <laughs> I don't think that's like a, a good, a really good, a good polar bear name. Yeah, the audience uh, will have a chance to message in in the message box where they're watching, so they could always let us know. But yeah, he's having a good nap this yeah. afternoon. Yeah, he's been hanging out with us. Yeah. So so tell me they um. So they are on land, but they are they eat on ice, correct? Exactly, yes. Yeah. So one of the reasons Churchill's so unique is that we get to view polar bears on land here, where really polar bears want to be out on the sea ice. And mm -hmm. the sea ice gives them access to their main prey seals, which they need to survive. All that blubber has all the calories they need. But at this mm -hmm. time of the year in this area, there's no sea ice. So the sea ice will come back in the next month or two. But until then, the bears are here. They're conserving energy with very, very little to eat on land. And that's why we see these napping bears right now. They're napping, but they're also like starving. Right. They're hungry, yeah. There's yeah, really so. no sustenance on land. You know, they've adapted to fast for months at a time. Um, we do see them eating, you know, seaweed snacks and oh, berries okay. if they can yeah. get them, but they're really not getting any true calories or energy from foods they find on land. And so they eat um, primarily seals. That's like their main... Number one number seals, one. yeah, okay. and the blubber particularly in the seals. Oh, okay. So they're really... And, you eat, and I think they're very unique for terrestrial mammals to have such a to need such a fat rich content for as their main source of 
food, is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. They're, even though we find them on land at this time of the year, we technically call them a marine mammal because exactly they need that seal blubber. They're so tied to the ocean. Mm -hmm. They're the biggest bear, the most carnivorous bear, and they're really not suited to live on land for long lengths of time. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I guess like the receding ice, uh, it basically there's climate change has caused uh, like ice to be receding even more and more. Like, and is that why we're y we're very concerned about the future of polar bear populations here? Exactly. Yeah, uh, with climate warming, we have seen losses mm -hmm. in sea ice that are expected to continue. And these bears we sometimes call the fat, hairy, white canaries in the coal mine because sea ice has changed in this part of Hudson Bay in Hudson Bay as a whole, and in turn, we have seen changes in the polar bears. So this population has already experienced declines over the mm -hmm. last several decades. They're smaller, they're having fewer cubs, and there's about 30% fewer bears than there used to be. So we yeah. know that loss of access to seals mm -hmm. by way of loss of ice is having an impact. Okay, so basically, but we already know that we're locked into a, a definite climate rise for the next 100 years, right? So exactly, which makes it all the more important that we make big changes now so that we can eventually reverse that. We know that sea ice is very mm -hmm. responsive to changes in the atmosphere, so if we can take bold action now, we can make sure that sea ice does remain in the Arctic, and so do polar bears. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's pretty grim. <laughs> yeah. We're really, we are really hopeful. Yeah, we yeah. think more than ever people are on board. They're using their voices and their power to make our leaders make the changes to more mm. renewable energy sources. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's totally right. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, I don't know, should I play some more music? Yeah, thanks for being here yeah, and playing course, music. Yeah, 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 we're excited to have you on board Buggy One. What a treat. I don't know. It's a yeah. Good, it's, a, it's, a, it's a joy. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me see here. I've got... Sing a song about. Um, I have a song called. Uh, I have a song about bears, and uh, this one's going to be about specifically modified for polar bears. So we'll see how it does. Yeah. This is a, a polar bear that has a love affair with the uh, intraspecies rabbit. So Interesting. Their offspring will not be fertile, if even if they will have. <laughs> That's probably uh, good. An offspring, so it's probably not good. No. <laughs> Well, you don't want to see a bear, a polar bear rabbit hybrid? I do, just not the offspring of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's called um, Polar Bear and Penny, Penny Rabbit and Polar Bear. <laughs> <laughs> wondering when we'll start suffer days to come fresh out of wishes fate would have dare he had to see his polar bear filled with his little nose of air <laughs> didn't matter he didn't care and mystic, faint as can be, Penny Rabbit floated fast, planted his paws upon the shore, many others had failed before, waiting was polar bear eyes to the sea, fingers on her violin, playing for butterflies and bees, little shaky at the knee. <laughs> that slender hand and that smile she said to me is more than I can bear. Wondering when will you have the courage to sing a song for me and you over there? So 
So we are doing, talking about nature and ecology. Uh, I have a creation myth called um, Bittersweet Genesis for him and her and them. Uh, and it's about the creation and destruction of the universe told through the tale of two cosmic lovers. So it's like, it's a cyclical feeling. It's, uh, so. Of course, uh, you know, I don't want to ta ever talk about the destruction of anything, you know, since we are talking about conservation. Right. But in my head, the universe will <laughs> eventually go dark. But in our lifetime, not. Yes. So. <laughs> Is that a good transition? Love it. <laughs> okay. Nailed it. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to be so supportive. <laughs> you can tell me that that sucked. That's <laughs> <It's> not going <laughs> to happen. Uh, let me see here. Right, here goes. together mixed in a celestial bowl and hand fluff with a feather and the tears of bliss were not a miss it was a good day on the second day we created the earth tickled it in irony as we made love upon its girth and to our delight the sun gave us the stars the creation of the moon was a miracle of light descended from the rift in the dark star of night my veins pulsed butters illuminated with heart. On the fourth day, we felt compelled to whistle. For how could we call the lovers to nestle and keep us company in this world of new and fresh? Today, the pain to life, the portrait of a sacred friend, the perfect wife, in synesthesia. Together we will fill the world with colored wine But the story is the present time of restlessness and wake up Thank you. 
flown fast, but then is counting. The wars have been won, but there's few left standing between us and the shadows of Christmas past. Critically acclaimed, but sadly underrated. Fortune definitely favored us, but no one celebrated. Oh, British, we're spitting out the round. As we gazed upon the city lights, we each laughed aloud one final time and agreed this is one thing we And as we held our breath and forced a will, the minutes stopped, the air was still, and minds began to unlearn their faulted ways. We blasted through the hills, and were the first to go in the most painful soul. We made them first, we learned to be the fingers of the seeds and we saw them in the dirt. We cried for the king. Lord, the pleas of the forest on the seas, as we scorch the earth with our tears, we burn our fear until there's nothing left. Um, wow. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> audience of one, an off camera <laughs> audience like, of. I want to clap. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. You guys can clap. It'll make me feel better. Okay, good, 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 oh, good. Yeah. good. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. And they're and they're all masked back there. Don't don't worry, guys. We uh, <laughs> all safety protocols here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, honestly, I was thinking about you know like the creation. You know this this universe this that we live in the world that we live in. It's this almost like miraculous, perfect balance, right, of, of life. Yeah. Like everything is dependent on each other. Yeah. The polar bears are dependent on the seals. Um, the Arctic foxes are, you know, a lot of these other animals are dependent on the carcasses that, they, that the, the, the polar bears leave. Yeah. And the seals eat the salmon. Could you, you, want, could you enlighten us? Yeah, <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, e ecology, the study of ecology in and of itself, how things work together and are intertwined is so incredible and arctic ecology is just fascinating and, and all built around arctic sea ice so we like to say arctic sea ice is to the ocean what soil is to the forest it's really forming the base of this whole food chain in the arctic it's allowing all these little creatures to flourish and grow in the sea ice to feed the fish feed the seals feed the bears and of course people live all across the arctic and depend on this ecosystem functioning but arctic sea ice is more than that it acts as Earth's air conditioner. You know, it's reflecting all the sunlight away from the Earth with its vast white expanse, helping cool the entire planet no, where, no matter where people live. So it truly is an ecosystem that affects us all. We're all connected, no matter where we are or what we're doing. So it's important that we do our best as humans as part of this ecology to keep it in balance. Yeah, and I guess, and even like the way the polar bears have, like they've evolved to adapt exactly for this per this to to serve this purpose that they as a keystone uh, predator right so yeah to, to keep it all in check highly specialized yeah to this particular environment mm -hmm. um like 
<laughs> these. Is there something particular? <laughs> can we can we bring out the Jaws? Yeah, let's bring out Jaws. That's All actually right. his name, Jaws. Oh, his name's Jaws. Yeah, I thought Jaws. Jaws was a perfect. It's a, it's a great a good name. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is it's a replica of a skull, but this is an adult male polar bear skull replica. And yeah, you can see. I mean, these teeth. These are carnivore teeth here. They are made to grab seals, basically, pull them out of the water. The back teeth meant for shearing blubber off of seals. Mm. Yeah, polar bears, uh, from top to bottom, they're really made to be seal killers, you know, and actually their jaws are not quite as strong even as brown bear jaws because polar bear prey is squishy and brown bears have to really chew. So polar bears still have very strong bite force, but not quite as strong as their brown bear cousins. Yeah. Do you think the seals are proud to be a part of the ecology? You know, I hope so. <laughs> they have it a little <laughs> rough out there. I hope they find some pride <laughs> in their day to day. That's yeah. food for uh, uh, polar bears. <laughs> yeah, keeping the ecosystem going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks, seals. Yeah, thanks. Good job, seals. Good job, seals. <laughs> <laughs> and the seals eat salmon and fish, and right, and then they yeah, keep that yeah. It depends where they are. Polar cod is a huge species up in the Arctic or Arctic cod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they're fish eaters. They swim really fast and grab the fish. That's polar bears are great swimmers, but they can't outswim seals in the water. That's why they need that sea ice to go get them. But of course, seals are super fast, fast enough to catch those fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, here's a weird question: If there was more fit, like, uh, aren't we overfishing? Anyways, to begin with, is it like, is there something where we might need more fish in the oceans or no? Yeah, I, I do think overfishing is definitely mm. an issue in many parts of the world. I'm not sure if the Arctic experiences that yet, just because there hasn't mm. been a lot of access due to sea ice in, in the past to the mm. major fishing operations. So, yeah. so far, I don't think overfishing is the main issue here yet, uh, but definitely in other areas. Mm. Again, all connected though. Yeah, it's yeah. all connected. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah, have you always found nature inspires your music? Or I think the combination is just so beautiful. I think it's like uh, the more I've had more time to experience, uh, to try and like understand what brings me joy. I yeah. think it's like I've I found that you know I, I got in I got a place in Bozeman, Montana, where I moved to, and then I really enjoy nature. And I think it's it's just being out there, the huge expanse of like a mountain. It kind of humbles me yeah. you know and, and just like makes me really happy and I think it I realize that it's you know when you're in the city um, you live in the city and you have all these comforts and delights mm -hmm. but then you you go out into nature and you realize oh this is like y you feel like th you see things bloom and you think you, you see the cycle and rhythm mm -hmm. of nature and it's really actually something that I've completely been deta detached from like for most of my life because I just live you know I lived in New York City for 10 years you don't see anything Right. You know, the people cry when they see like the the fall. You know, in Central Park, it get gets a little folly, and the the leaves <laughs> change, and people <laughs> cry, and they say, "Oh, I love it. It's nature." You know, but that's you know, it's just a taste of the kind of spirituality that people have. Even like indigenous people who have always connected, you know, to to nature. Um, I mean, do you think indigenous? Like, I mean, I know there's a lot of indigenous knowledge that I think ecologists are starting to not ignore you know right. uh recently right do you would you agree oh absolutely yeah i think it's uh, been ignored for far too long and i'm glad there's a new reawakening to how critical it is to listen to the people of the land who know the land and have seen it through centuries through their entire history so i am just so grateful when they're able to share their knowledge and want to and when we're able to learn and incorporate that to what we're doing i think it's absolutely critical for long-term conservation yeah, I, I mean, I'm really glad to see that like yeah. being a, a priority, actually. And yeah, yeah, it's I so think. important. Um, I mean, there's so much to learn when you're out in nature, you know, even like, um, like, y or like, hunt, like hunting, mm -hmm. for example, you know, it's very easy to, to live in a city and say, I can't believe you're killing animals and I'm vegan, you know, but yeah. then also it's, you know, if you're living and you pay respect to the animal and it's a, it's a source of sustenance, you know, I totally get it, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I think there's a big difference between living off the land and then supporting factory farming, mm. for example. Oh, yeah, fa like yeah, factory farming, for example. It's yeah. It's, it's, it's like the worst. <laughs> it's a little yeah. different, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I think people, I'm glad to see that people are like looking for more um, sustainable sources of food. Yeah, me know. too. And, and when people have access to, the, to those resources, that's great. And there's still a lot of places that don't, but yeah. if we're able to make the choices, then that goes a long way. Yeah. 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 Thank you. No, yeah. of course. <laughs> Play more music. Yeah. What else do I have here? Um, let's see. I can play a couple more songs. Uh, maybe I could play some songs. Katie, do you have some um, polar bear footage you could show? 
Or how's our polar bear doing? Still asleep? Yeah. What's his name? Ralph. I think that's what we're going with for now. No, no, suggest yeah. no other suggestions? Not for names. No? No. Wow. Some really uh, not... People maybe just really like Ralph. Ralph. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, is Ralph white? Most, he's a little dirty, <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding. <I'm> <laughs> anyways, he's a little dirty white. He's a little dirty white, off okay. white. Yeah. Okay. Mixed. <laughs> <laughs> Would Ralph be a bear of color? Are there bears of color? I get, well, I guess the other <laughs> <laughs> black bears, brown bears. Oh, they're yeah, the yeah. other bear species I guess have a lot more color you than polar bears. Think they racist towards each other? I perhaps? sure hope not. I think mm. bears probably coexist better than I think so. people, maybe. Oh, what about pizzlies? That is a thing. Yeah, very small. It doesn't happen a lot, can but they do can interbreed. Can you tell people about what's going on here in, <laughs> the, in, the, in the Arctic? Yeah, so there have been instances where polar bears and brown bears have bred together, but uh, the latest instance we know of was in the Canadian High Arctic. One female polar bear on multiple occasions mated with brown bears. Had a couple litters of hybrid bears and uh, growlers or pizzlies, and the bears Gross. are not really well suited for ice or land. So. Um, we we don't think it's a common occurrence, but it does happen. What do you think Dave Grohl thinks about growlers? We should ask him. <laughs> I wonder. Should get Dave Grohl on, on growlers. Good. I wonder if he knows Just what they <laughs> are. <laughs> I'm sure he's heard about. <laughs> I I'm hope sure so. somebody's mentioned it to him. <laughs> Dave, Dave, there's a this thing <laughs> up in Canada. It's really it's cool. A growler. You should check it out. <laughs> no way. He'd probably be into it. What you're saying, I'd like is to think so. Is that would that be like kind of biodiversity? Would you say or no? Um, in this case, the hybrids aren't really very well suited for either mm. environment. So it's in a way, it's like a new animal, but it's not really going anywhere. So mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's still the out. funny, funny <laughs> occurrence of nature. Yeah. Oh no, they're <laughs> funny, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll do another song. Cool. Maybe we could have a, a polar bear montage, perhaps. Of sorts. This is called I Am the Antichrist to Growlers. <laughs> statements of both and me and my heart is shook with fear I'm a coward behind a shield and spear take this sword and throw it far let it shine under the morning star
Thank you. Beautiful. That was a great mon montage. Did you see, just see that, that? It was gorgeous. Was some slow motion, or oh. they're just kind of, aren't they kind of slow walk when they walk without intent? They, yeah, they really amble. amble. Yeah, they amble. But they oh. can sure cover a lot of distance over time. It's deceiving oh, yeah. to the eye. Yeah, they can really move over periods of time. Actually, they're great sprinters, too. They can sprint faster than oh. Usain Bolt for short periods of time. Oh, like comparable to, like, what? Say? Um, how, how well, fast? faster than the fastest human on Earth, oh, yeah. but just for short periods of time until they overheat. So, <laughs> but otherwise, they just yeah, they take seem to take their time, but yeah. they can walk a long ways. Are yeah. they so how how dangerous are they to like a human being? They you know they can be dangerous. Uh, you know, well-fed bears less likely to wander into towns or come into contact. And most occurrences, people run into polar bears. It's easy to scare them off. That is one thing we're concerned about with climate change and loss of sea ice is that more bears are spending more time on land and coming into contact with more communities. And that's part of the reason we have this radar project we're testing mm -hmm. in Churchill uh, to try to get better technology to support communities that need it. Oh, because like, because they're, they're are, they are wild. Interactions with humans could end in deadly consequences. Yeah, for, for either, humans or, human or, or, bear. or polar bears. Yeah, so if yeah. people had an early warning system to let mm -hmm. them know when polar bears were coming in, it, it could be beneficial for both species. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, so basically, they like to congregate out remotely. Like, we're, we're how far? We're pretty far out of town. Right? Even, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, gosh, uh, 20, 30 kilometers outside of town okay. for now. Yeah, yeah, we're out on the tundra where no vehicles mm -hmm. come. No I'm American, vehicles. so what is kilometers? Oh, I'm a Canadian. I what is that <laughs> in miles, guys? I don't know. I don't even know. Tw how many? Small chunk. 22, 22 kilometers? What's a marathon? Ish. 22. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man. We well. shouldn't do math on this show. <laughs> this is not a math show. This is about conservation. How about conservation of a metric system? Uh, well, I've got a couple of questions from oh, our yeah, audience, if you're cool. Sure. Um, so we have, well, first people are asking if th this bear can hear the music. He might be able to hear a little bit. Bears, polar bears have hearing roughly on par with humans, but you know, he hasn't lifted his head. I, I don't oh, think that's any. He's getting up. He's getting up oh, right now. What perfect timing. Well, there he is. He, uh, you heard the question. There's just a bit of a delay yeah. in the camera. Oh, he's looking around. Okay, he's looking around now. Yeah, he might be able to hear a bit of it, but it's sure not bothering him, which is really. He's off something off to the distance. Some people have a question about your music. So it's kind of a, yeah. a multi-prong. So can music be a catalyst for change? And have you ever done anything like this before, like a conservation type music? Like no. Yeah, very cool. I have not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think music is great, especially like, you know, if you're an artist or a poet or something, yeah. it's really important to, um, to use your voice, I think, to elevate these messages, you know, that you care about because it's, this is one way to, um, it's one thing for somebody to just tell you this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, mm -hmm. but to, you know, you need different avenues, ways to express, um, to get to people, I think. And I think yeah. it's really, if you, if you have a cause like this, it's great to employ artists and musicians to, to do it because it, 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 you know, they'll approach it in a different way than you think. Yeah. And I think like the, to get a message out in m the most diverse way possible is probably the strongest. I yeah, think. I could not agree more. Conservation isn't only about science by any stretch. Yeah. It's about like love for what's yeah. around us. Or like translating science to the public yes. so that they can, they can understand it in, in a very simple way. In yeah, right. and in different ways and reaching different audiences. So we're so glad to have you to help us amplify oh, yeah, our voice. Yeah, and just one more question for you for now. Uh, what's it like on the buggy? How do you <laughs> feel about this? Are there, are there other people in the buggy with you? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a, a few. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole crew. Um, the buggy is like this massive bus. Yeah. Uh, it's like a monster truck. Yeah. On steroids. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's pretty cool though. There's it's you know cool. we there's have a bathroom and bunk beds and yeah, stove. Like Wi-Fi. Yeah. I don't know if they all have Wi-Fi. Nah, they don't. Uh, I think we had a a sandwich, l delicious lunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really tasty. Um, what else do we have? We have lots of good vibes. Good vibes. American and Canadian. Both. both like coming together. Coming together. Yeah. You know, <laughs> in Canada. Yes. Yeah. Celebrate the polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Got uh, diversity. We got an Asian guy on the bus. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Always <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, this is a this is a unique once in a lifetime experience for me, so I appreciate oh. being here. Well, we so appreciate having you and your music mm -hmm. on board, and it's been really wonderful. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah.
Oh, we could uh, say something else. Yeah. yeah, I think we've got time for. Yeah, we have about twenty minutes left or so. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, maybe I could try like a little idea I had. Oh, cool. I have. So part of my um. So part of uh, what I've been doing recently, I call them song films, is I go to a location, and we have a film crew, my good buddy Max Lowe, and it's, uh, and we have a, a crew uh, from Winnipeg here. But we are filming a little short film about this experience of me coming out here and experiencing it, and then also hopefully creating a, an emotional piece with music that conveys the message of conservation. Um, and uh, part of what I do is I like to improvise music and so I've been kind of working on this theme, and I'd like to, to kind of share it Perfect. for uh, in a very <laughs> in its very basic form. So we'll see what happens. So. I kind of started off with like this melody I was humming on the shores, you sun Thank you. 
So I'll probably finish it by the end of the trip, hopefully. It's um, beautiful. Kind of make it the theme of this visit. Yeah. And then it'll, it'll be like a short film, you know, that Mr. Maxlow over here is going to yeah. finish Perfect. sometime. Okay. And hopefully uh, we can share it around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's a kind of, uh, I don't know, I have, a, I have a lot of thoughts, you know, just about mm -hmm. ecology. It's, a, it's really changed my mind. I mean, it's really shaped how I, f I view um the world you know mm -hmm. just like being out in nature yeah or i guess like the intersection the interconnectedness of nature even like you know we've learned how forests ecology forest ecologies are now connected you know the mycenaeum like the underground yeah. fungi and we know that like it's um they kind of breathe like one organism mm -hmm. even though they're different species you know intraspecies interspecies like collaboration is like something that's we never really thought of before. We always were very censured on one, one animal, one plant at a time. Right. Yeah. Things more depth of connection than we even realize. It's really incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, I really appreciated today speaking to your teenage daughter, <laughs> oh yeah. and I think it's so great that you have this part of you that you can share with her because, yeah, her generation will be inheriting this and and I was really impressed by the discussion we had with her and and when you go back to see her the next time you talk to her what do you think you'll share about this experience I mean I'd like to bring her up sometime oh, you know, that would future, be great yeah, yeah. Just show her what it's what this place is like yeah. and what what happens here mm -hmm. you know cause it's a very beautiful like thing that not that many people get to see yeah and experience um I think a lot of like I didn't realize because I'm older, you know, that my generation really, uh, I had heard about, you know, polar bears and the, and the Arctic for like 20 years, right? Yeah. you know, and it was just on the edge of my imagination. And then climate change, you know, started to, people started to really start yelling about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. about a decade ago. This is in my, in my very, yeah, just average head, you yeah. know, and I'm not an activist, you know, but it's like, um, you know, we're paying the, we're paying the price mm -hmm. and our children are paying the price right mm -hmm. because our their futures are dynamically going to be impacted so mm -hmm. she really she and her generation really woke me because it's like a matter of fact they really care about their future and they cannot they believe how complacent we are you know yes they're yeah. just screaming at the adults to get it together yeah. so that their future is protected and yeah our future is hand in hand with the polar bears future so yeah. it's uh it's part of the reason we're out here talking about polar bears because ultimately Everything we do for them, we do for us. Yeah, would you call them the white, hairy canaries in the coal mine? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> these guys for sure. They're sounding the alarm. They've given us a bit of warning here, so we should use it. Yeah. Yeah, so wh what kind of things can we do, do you think, to, to yeah. com combat climate change? Well, the so the big things ultimately we need to do are transition away from burning so many fossil fuels and toward cleaner energy sources like solar and wind power. We need to be more efficient with the fuels we are burning and we need to be a collective voice in our communities, our provinces, states, countries to get our leaders to make real change. So the Conference of the Parties conference is coming up, COP26. Mm -hmm. Leaders are getting together again to try to enact some real policies and we're really hoping we see some actual change happen and some some real momentum forward with true policies that will help uh, w at the same time there's a conference of youth happening mm -hmm. so if students are too young to have a voting voice they can still be a part of this movement uh, for collective change and sign on to to 
push the politicians. So, you know, electing good leaders that so, listen. So, so pressuring politicians. Pressure. Um, would mm-hmm. you say even at the local level as well? Totally at the local level. Yeah. Sometimes the local level is going to impact us even more so. Mm-hmm. So even, yeah, municipal elections and getting out in your own community, even in your own school and seeing and seeing what you can do. And, it, you know, it's no longer about, you know, turn off the lights and recycle. That's all great. But what we really need to be doing is this community action. We need to be banding together. It's it's not all on one person. We're all in it together. Yeah. And, and we really do have a loud voice when we're all in it together. Yeah, yeah. I, think s- I think so. Um, and uh, honestly, I've been thinking a lot about, um, I guess, like overconsumption. Yeah. You know, the fact that us, Ameri- you know, I'm, a, I'm an American and I just like all my toys and all my conveniences at totally. me. But it's like, mm-hmm. isn't it like uh, a lot of developed countries use up, you know, there were only like a fifth of the world's population, but we, I think we use up like three, four fifths of Oh, of yeah. production of, of fossil fuels. Totally world, disproportionate. Right? T- yeah. Totally disproportionate, mm-hmm. right? And Absolutely. then we blame like uh, developing countries for their things. But in, in reality, w- the, the conveniences we need are the reason why, a huge reason why there's uh, this kind of the problems that we have, right? Could you agree? I think so, yeah. Uh, we were talking earlier today about you know, all the, the transportation um, of goods, food, services that, that we use and how much fossil fuels that burns. And if we can just do things like, yeah, like support eat, your eat farmer's local, market. Yeah, eat, eat yeah, locally, like seasonally. Totally, right? Like yep. don't, don't demand apples from New Zealand, like in, in spring. Ex- yeah. Like, like stuff like that, tomatoes in the winter, I don't know. It, it's true, yeah, and those little choices really do add up. And if you're supporting at farmers markets, local farmers, the people around you mm-hmm. in your own neighborhood, then it's it's easy to see that growth and that push forward to to better practices yeah. overall. Yeah. And then just factory farming is just really un- yeah, just not sustainable. Yeah, Mon- more more sustainability. Monocrops, you know, yeah, like I, I think it, you know we mentioned earlier diversity, mm-hmm. genetic diversity, um, just. There, yeah. There's better ways to do things, and we have the ways to do the things. We just yeah. need to do them at a bigger scale. Like we know what we have to do. But the like technology is there. Yeah, but like an overall attitude change, I think, for, up from the public yeah. of just like thinking we don't. There, there's a serious problem, and there's a and it, c- it takes a combined effort of individual effort. It really to does. Make a change. It adds up, and you know we can take the lesson from the polar bears on land right now. Yeah. You know a bit of patience. We're not asking anyone to not eat for four months, <laughs> but, you know, a bit of patience in, in doing what's available to you at the time is yeah, good lessons to take. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Let yeah, me course. check. I think we might have a couple more questions here. Yeah. And one more song would be lovely. Um, I just want to mention that some chat window folks are suggesting we name the polar bear K or Kuma. Oh, so Kuma. <laughs> Kuma, yeah. My do- that's my uh, S- Samoya dog. Oh, there yeah. you go. So people know. Kuma. Yeah. Actually kind of looks like a polar bear, honestly. Perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Kuma. Kuma also, Kuma also means bear in Japanese. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good and fit then. So Shirokuma, that's what they call him. Oh. White bear. White bear. Love Shirokuma. that. Shirokuma. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, what a, what a great ending to a, <laughs> a fun hour. Yeah, it's well, been great. Thanks so much for joining me. It's Thank nice you for being here. Yeah. Um, let me see. I could do one more. Let's see. What could I do? This one called, this one ab- about nature. It's about tsunamis, violin tsunami. Cool. It's about the, uh, it's actually interesting. Yeah, it's uh, not this violin, but I have another violin that's named Tsunami because the maker was kind of, he's a Buddhist monk and he's sending his his prayers to the, the, the Sendai disaster, you know, in Japan. Yeah. The tsunami disaster. And he kind of embodied the feelings. Wow. So it's kind of like a lot of, I guess I'm really starting to learn about, about Buddhism and like Shintoism, especially Japanese uh, like folk religions. They're very in tune with nature. And I think a lot of indigenous, because I think it's because you live within nature yeah. that you respect it. And if yeah. we distance ourselves too much, then we kind of lose touch exactly. and then we become callous to mm-hmm. the problems. And then we wonder why we're having problems, right? Right. Yeah. So, so everybody go take a hike. Go, <laughs> go, <laughs> go, go, go into nature yeah. and see how beautiful it is. Touch some grass. Yeah. yeah, touch some grass, you know. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so this is Violin Tsunami. <laughs> Thank you. 
different way to be. different way to be Guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Or actually, what am, what am, am I crazy? Thank you for inviting me here. <laughs> oh my God, I'm Thank right. you so much for joining <laughs> us. No, this has really been an incredible experience for all of us, and thank you so much for helping us amplify you know, the polar bear through different means, and your music is just gorgeous. It's been I'm, a so, I'm so happy here, and I, I pray for their, their safe ecological recovery. Yes, that's true. Well, hopefully, you know, we'll have you back in the future, maybe yeah. with your daughter, and yeah, I'd love, to, I'm sure she'd love to do yeah. something like this again. Yeah. yeah. Thanks to everyone for watching the concert today with Kishibashi on Tundra Buggy One. Tundra Buggy One, number one. Tundra Buggy <laughs> One. It all started with Tundra Buggy. Oh, oh, big question. Was it first? Was it called Tundra Buggy One, or what was it first called? <laughs> uh, yeah, Tundra Buggy One. Mm. Would you call yeah. your first yeah. ever? 
The yeah, tundra, the tundra buggy. Tundra buggy. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. No, it's Frontier's North Confirmed. Adventures tundra buggy one. It's a big question. It was my first question when I arrived here. The so. tundra buggy. Yeah. The tundra buggy. The tundra buggy. Yeah. The OG. Well, thanks for having me. Here's some extra music. Thank <laughs> you.